Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you all to the 18th Annual Tallgrass Film Festival. My name is Hannah Bothner, and I am the short film coordinator for the festival. Thank you all for watching and for tuning in to the festival. We would also like to extend a special thank you to all of our sponsors. We could not be doing this without you. If you are enjoying your Tallgrass experience, please let everyone know on Facebook and Instagram. Tag us at Tallgrass Film and use the hashtag Tallgrass2020. I'd like to welcome to the Zoom today uh, numerous filmmakers from the comedy short film program. Um, I'm going to start with Drew and I'll have you introduce yourself. Uh, tell us what your film is and what your role in the film was. Yeah, so my name is Drew Broadhurst. I'm the writer, director, and producer of Death by PowerPoint. Awesome, and we'll move on to Dallas. I am uh, I'm Dallas. I am the actor and producer on uh, Death by PowerPoint. And Elias? I am Elias Rodriguez, the director of Mid-30s Martyr. Awesome, and on to Donnie. <laughs> I am Donnie Rodriguez. I am the brother of the director of Mid-30s Martyr uh, and also the writer and producer of it. All right, and JP? Yeah, um, I'm JP Snell. I'm the writer, producer, and director of a short film called Free. Awesome, and Noah? I'm Noah Asheroff. I'm the writer and director of the short film Sofa So Good. Um, well, thank you all for being here today. Um, everybody just got done watching your films. I just want to tell you that up top. So um, no worries about spoilers or anything like that. Um, so uh, the first question I'm going to ask to the group at large, and we'll, we'll go around like that Red Robin style. Um, what was your source material or inspiration for making this film? We'll start with the um, uh, Death by PowerPoint guys. Okay, sure. Um, so my name is Drew. I, so my job in real life is an instructional designer. And before that, I was a graphic designer for, for many years. And one thing I did as a graphic designer was make a lot of PowerPoints. So of course, as a graphic designer, you kind of know how they should be made, how they should look. But oftentimes, you'll deal with these subject matter experts who just have their own ideas for design. And it's usually everything that you could possibly do wrong with a, with a PowerPoint. So this source material, you know, they say write what you know. I usually kind of write things I don't know, but in this case I did. And it was very easy to write the script. It was just like, you know, what, what have I seen in the past that was bad design and just kind of going through that. So it was, it was a lot of fun to work on and make. Absolutely. Okay, uh, we can yeah, move on. I, oh, um, go ahead. I, oh, sorry. I, no, I was going to butt in. Um, yeah, Drew, Drew begged me to be a part of it. So I, I had to think about it for... Just kidding. <laughs> um, riding in the car. <laughs> we we were on our way back from another festival, and he pitched the idea on a uh, three and a half hour drive back from a, another festival. So, um, yeah, I was definitely willing to be a part of it since our previous film that we worked on together was uh, more dramatic uh, in a sense. So this is definitely the light of heart comedy that uh, we wanted to definitely pull together. So. Did he did he pitch it uh, uh, like? by words or did he make a powerpoint in the car <laughs> while he was driving to on the little to you on little gps screen <laughs> right like did he Perfectly. yeah like yeah. Drive i was driving so. yeah yeah i love it yeah he just he just kept driving around for like hours and i was like are we going the right way and he's like well, i'm waiting for you to say yes <laughs> it's like an elevator pitch but you press all of the buttons in the elevator <laughs> you can't get out of a drive so. no. <laughs> all right um mid-30s martyr team yeah donnie why don't you take this yeah uh, so mid-30s martyr uh thank you everybody for watching and thank you hannah and everybody here for being a part of this we are uh definitely excited that this film was out there. So this film's a little uh, autobiographical. Um, it's about two people who, like I wrote this uh, for a stage sketch at Second City in Chicago, and it was like over the top dramatic. And then it morphed into, uh, with my brother, who's a director, into like a more grounded and emo emotionally connected, um, sort of like Casablanca stylized, Send off and yeah, it, it's about two people who love each other, but um, 
are probably afraid to leave each other and they just, you know, sort of navigate that uh, into what you saw. So, yeah, it was something I was close to the source material and I, the original sketch started off every time you would talk to anybody who's like, hey, uh, do you want to grab a beer? And they're like, I'm in grad school. I can get a beer with you in 20, 20 just insert three years later. They act like they can't hang out at any moment in time. So it started off as a sketch on that joke of all my friends just saying like, I'll talk to you after I have my uh, grad degree. And, but then turned into something a little more emotional. Yeah, and to add to that, when we were adapting it for the screen, uh, Donnie, because uh, we did two shorts two weekends in a row. This was the first one. It was like we were way in over our heads. Uh, but Donnie just wanted to make this one just straightforward comedy. But uh, speaking to what his personal experience was, clearly towards the end, it gets way more heartfelt. Uh, and that was really, really fun to, to play around with and uh, just kind of let it become what it became. Awesome. Okay, and on to JP. Um, yeah, I wrote this um, short film when we were living in Amman, Jordan. Uh, our entire family was there. We have twins, boy and a girl. Uh, at the time, they were three. Uh, and they were just picking up some old world kind of gender tropes uh, about girls not being as good as boys. And that was really where the idea kind of started. Well, that's awesome. And Noah? Um, my film uh, is about a young woman searching for, a, who really, really needs a sofa, and she basically searches it for the entire movie, like looks for one for the entire movie, and uh, in the streets of Brooklyn, I would say, and it's pretty autobiographical, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, she meets uh, some, several characters along the way. It's not, it, it didn't all happen the way it happened in the film, but it was about like, me really wanting to get like the perfect furniture to make my um, living room and by this my life complete. And, um, and uh, I also, I really like uh, um, puns and titles. So I thought of the title Sofa So Good and then I was like, okay, I gotta make a movie. So yeah. By the way, I, I, I really love the name Tallgrass and I don't know, I keep telling, telling that like the slogan should be the, the grass is always taller. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that. I'm going to text that to our, uh, our so, marketing director as soon as this is over. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah, we, we definitely like puns and titles around here, too, because we've got, like, uh, we, we d used to do small grass, which was, like, our kid-centered. Um, we've done dude grass before, which was, uh, was our big, like, big Lebowski um, uh, fundraiser thing. Yeah. We, we like the puns and titles over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ball grass is really cool names. Yeah, it's easy to play with too. <laughs> um, so I, I wanted to ask, um, next question for the, for the whole group, um, any big challenges you had to overcome in filming? Anything like especially unexpected that, that came about? Um, we can start again with the uh, team from Death by PowerPoint. Well, um, so our hardest thing was it was the the shots of the interrogation scene and i think i think dallas it was like international leaf blow your yard day and it was just everybody out there every time someone would stop they'd start blowing the weeds again and it was just so loud that you know we just had to keep taking breaks and wait <laughs> silent time to we, get the we literally had to shut down for like an hour and we were debating because we we had a couple pas on site and we were just like i was like ah. It's like, and, and I, I went with one of them to next door because I feel like it was just leaf blowing day. And yeah. The whole yeah. neighborhood was just blowing their leaves back and forth to one another. It yeah. Was, yeah. Like, was like yard to there. yard. Yeah. Yard to yard. And I, I went over there. I was like, hey, when, when are you guys going to be done? And he's like, and of course, we had to introduce ourselves and what we were doing. It's just weird going up to somebody doing that. And I've had many experiences with that kind of thing happening, telling someone to just stop making noise. But um, but other than that, I honestly, everything was smooth sailing from there. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't have any other things that we uh, we came across, but, but that, yeah, no. you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> what about the mid-30s martyr team? 
Yeah, going into the uh, Casablanca um, homage uh, when we first were going into it, I, I was like, yeah, no way we're going to be able to get an actual airplane hangar and all that stuff. And yeah. I'm so used to the DIY uh, filmmaking aspect. And I know a little bit of After Effects. So I'm like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to do some sort of plane in the far background. Uh, but credit to the uh, the actor, um, J Jeremy Metter, who is one of the producers, and also the pilot, uh, John Petrowski, who's another producer. They were in Donnie's sketch show, and uh, they kind of came to us with wide eyes, like, knowing that uh, Donnie writing and me directing, like, that we could make an awesome team. Uh, and they, like, they just had it in their minds that they were going to make it happen, uh, getting an actual airplane, airplane hangar. I was like, good luck, guys. Like, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. And it was, so I thought that was going to be, like, the major hurdle. But, like, they, out of nowhere, we had just all of a sudden had had it. And I was like, wow. That's amazing. Credit to that. It, it, just go through. it was a week out, I think about a week out, and we didn't have it yet. Cold calling for an airplane hangar is a much more difficult than <laughs> asking for like you got to know a guy who knows a person whose um, sibling is connected with it. And that's sort of how we ended up with it uh, <laughs> to uh, everyone's credit. We were going to originally do it in Michigan with an airplane hangar, couldn't get it. So then we scrambled and somehow found one in the South suburb of Chicago. Thanks to Ed and Biz Brackett, uh, executive producers who uh, lent us their airplane and hangar and, uh, it, yeah, I mean, I we were going to stand in front of a green screen probably, and we wouldn't be talking to you at Tallgrass, although my brother can <laughs> knock it out of the park, but we'd be playing on, uh, you know, a, like YouTube fail channel uh, or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was the case. But yeah, uh, credit to all the producers. Awesome. And uh, JP, I saw you nodding your head earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I wrote, uh, there was a concept for the film I thought of when I was living in Amman, like I said, but we actually didn't, I didn't shoot until I got to Helsinki, Finland, two years later. So um, the crew, we had uh, a very international crew, and for most of them, um, English was their third language. So uh, the very first shot I knew I was in trouble I turned to my camera operator who's Russian and I said yeah I need like a little swoosh pan and he just goes smoking heavily smoking yes yes <laughs> now now what is this swoosh pan you're talking about and I was like okay <laughs> we you know just we'll tell you what to do and just kind of get on our day that way so it was um the language barrier thing I c constantly use English, you know, American slang, and they were just looking at, everyone's just looking at me like, what, is he, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, right, yes, uh, Finland, I forgot, yes, yeah. this is what I mean. So it took a little to get used to, it took a, a, a good hour for me to start to, like, get into the swing of it, like, wasn't really used to it, uh, but that was our, that was probably the biggest hurdle. That first hour was, was rough. Yeah, I can, ima I can imagine, I was actually going to ask you about what it was like to to film in Finland but yeah of course especially with like working with crew there and yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely yeah. right Noah um so maybe probably the biggest challenge was um there's something specific in the casting because uh so maybe I should mention that most of the actors in my film are stand-up comedians I produce comedy shows in New York and then like happened that scene so I actually had like a lot to choose from where it came to like the quirky characters that, um, in the film. And um, but in my lead, uh, my lead uh, actress, her name is, uh, she's a Lebanese stand-up comedian and her, her name is Natalie Alcar. And we wanted to, there's like one scene with her mom and we wanted to cast uh, an Arab speaking uh, woman someone like in her 50s or 60s and it turned out to be almost like Mission Impossible. Talk about like diversity in film, you don't, I mean, it was really, really hard to just find someone. I'm not talking about like, not like, forget to put the budget aside for a second, but like it was just, they almost don't exist <laughs> like that, just like that, yeah. So it was really, so, and then I ended up in kind of like, in it was a miracle because the one I wanted the most was obviously maybe one of the only ones um, um, 
these days it became like a very big actress in recent years in, in the US. She was always like in the Middle East and uh, in Europe. Her name is Hiyama Bass and she does, uh, she plays in Rami and in Succession. So it was such a, I was looking for like weeks under every stone. And then a week before filming, we were, we find, found out that she's in town shooting Succession. And oh. I managed to reach, reach out to her and, uh, and she liked the script and she says uh, that she wants to do more comedy. So she came and did the scene and did an amazing job. So yeah. That's that awesome. Was... She was perfect too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She is. Yeah. So uh, that actually leads into my next question. Um, just asking about uh, casting. Um, you know, how you got your actors, um, any, any like difficulties there. Um, I'd love to know more know, from you, Noah, about like, uh, working with um, stand-ups too. Uh, we can go ahead and start with you and, and move on to the others. Uh, yeah, so I really like working with comedians in general because, I mean, it depends for what, but like I, I know a lot of comedians in the city and um, I like working with them because they bring a lot of their own personality and like ideas to the screen and it can be really interesting, but you need to cast them very, very accurately because their range is limited. It's not like um, actors usually, unless, you know, unless in their, uh, sorry, at least in their first roles, I think, later it's something else. So I really, really enjoy working with comedians and I kind of, uh, Natalie, the, the lead, um, she, I, I thought there was something so fresh about her because she wasn't a professional actress before that. And now she's becoming one, I, I guess, because she's really good. And um, and I think every, each one of them uh, brought something different to the scene. Um, and I kind of also in the scene with the Israeli guy that she meets, there was like a lot of improv with the dialogues because he's also a comedian. And um, and then the scene also with the scene with the bar with the the guy the, bar, the guy at the bar Tom Takar, he's also a comedian. And then the the scenes with Hiyam and Zayn were more like. They're also like a bit more dramatic and they were more played like according to what we wrote, which was interesting and, and felt a bit more like serious. Maybe it's also because yeah. they're actors and it was a bit uh, different. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, we can uh, go to the Death by PowerPoint uh, crew next. Talk about casting. Yeah, so uh, I kind of uh, led the, the gear on this one because we, you know, we wanted to definitely shoot in uh, Columbus, Ohio, or in that surrounding area. Um, me and Drew at the time, we were in, uh, Drew's in West Virginia and I was in Maryland. Um, so we, uh, we definitely wanted to shoot in Columbus just because of the crew, where the crew was. And so we tried to cast out of Ohio. That was our first parameter and then trying to find the, the right people for it. I knew um, we actually cast Julia uh, Langholt uh, uh, out of Columbus, so she was already local there. And then, um, and we used Breakdown Express, which is um, Actors Access on the actor side, Breakdown Express on the, you know, the other side of it. Um, so we used that, and then uh, for the, uh, we needed a detective, and I saw. Uh, me and Monica Haynes, we've worked together. And so I just gave her a call one day and I was like, Hey, you want to just pull this off for us? <laughs> and, uh, uh -oh. I think Dallas froze up there. Yeah. <laughs> or he no just problem. didn't want to answer uh, the question. Happened be, yeah. It happened to be in Ohio. She happened to be in Ohio for like, uh, a couple days because she had an event up there with her dad and we kind of scheduled out the shoot just for her to be there and uh it all just worked out um yeah and i think we only had like the one extra uh, drew um i think it was uh, jeremy blackwell that played mm -hmm. the uh like the neighbor um but other than that, I mean, it was mostly just giving calls. Uh, Julia was the only one that we cast off Breakdown Express, uh, but yeah. Awesome. And uh, mid thirties martyr. Yeah. Uh, so Eli, I'll jump in with this. Uh, something like Noah. Uh, so when we started, my brother and I, 
making stuff. We use stand-ups primarily um, for all our stuff. We just put them in our web series and sketches and everything. So we come from that sort of background and mentality. And over the years, I always just, um, my sketch shows or any films we did, it would be a mix of like, I think the three females in our short, well, Wanjiku, Mandy, and Alexandria, all of them have like, I know uh, Wanjiku, unless, unless there's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? She's awesome, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. She's one of a kind. Uh, yeah. Yeah, our, our oh, oh, wow, I'm so excited to see that. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, so they all have like theater degrees and are just like incredible actresses. And then the other side, uh, Petrowski, mm -hmm. Metter, and myself, I acted in a bit. Like we come from more of the comedy side. Mm -hmm. And I think I've always sort of liked that, you know, uh, meshing of sort of different backgrounds because, uh, and my brother can speak to this more, he's a director, because I think it creates an energy that I think works with just what I write. Um, so, but yeah, Eli? Yeah, and Alex, uh, so she, I'd seen her perform it on stage uh, with my brother's crew, and I knew that she could do the, the, the big overdramatic theater acting, which is clearly what we need uh, with this. And so I just, you know, wanted to make sure that she was able to kind of like hone it in uh, right at the end there. And so that was that was so amazing because, again, we were doing two shorts in two weeks. And so we were we were dealing with kind of casting on both at the same time. So we just kind of had to go with like, yeah, a, a mix of instincts and also who we've like worked with before and who we could trust and uh, kind of, yeah, and then just kind of go on set and just see how, how close we could get it. And uh, yeah, credit to all the actors. I mean, we barely had a rehearsal too, and I think that that's a little unheard of. I think the night before, uh, we're, yeah, just in a second city room, just, I mean, table reading, we're not even rehearsing. And I think a lot of that energy, you know, I mean, it can fail, but I think it does create some magic of everybody just pulling from their different backgrounds and um yeah i you know it's certainly not uh not gonna work every single time but uh, we were so fortunate everybody brought it absolutely and uh jp on to you uh yeah i um my my two actors um um a diggy is a, a comedian a u.s citizen but he lives in Finland. he's a comedian uh, so I knew him through some through some friends, and I didn't write it with him in mind. But once I met him, I went, "That's the guy. Yeah, that, he'll do that. That he can pull that off." Um, and then um, I had another actress lined up. She's a filmmaker in Finland. And at the last minute, like maybe a week out, she couldn't do it. And it's the lead role, the 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 female. Um, and I met this woman, Wamburi is her name she's a yoga instructor she runs a wellness um uh like a wellness uh, program out of in finland called wellness with one baby but she just had something about her um the the lead uh for the for the film speaks no no dialogue so it has to be all this nonverbal kind of communication from her and i i i it was between her and another woman and I kept thinking, I think she can do this. I've never seen her act and I said, propose it to her and she thought, I think I can do that and I I think you can do it too. <laughs> I really do. And she was awesome. She was awesome. They were both great. They were both great. But, you know, casting is always one of those things. It's, it's like one of the tough things to find because you're trying to get people and their time and, and bring their talents and it's always tough to get the right mesh and I, I think there's never been a project I've done where the actors I started with or the actors we ended up shooting. It, it, it's never happened. I'd like to have that happen one day. It'd be awesome. But to, to date, no. It's always last minute, three days before. Do you know another person who's a man? They don't have to be tall. He's really heavy. Okay, let him be heavy. Let's just go. You know? Yeah, that's great. Well, you know, I, I think a lot of a lot of filmmaking is like rolling with the punches and going with the flow. So yeah, absolutely. Um, I, it, you know, we're talking about the comedy film block. I'd love to know um, what your guys' favorite types of comedy to work in are. Um, and if it's, if that's something that you guys, um, 
you guys typically work in that style? Was this a break from, from the normal kind of comedy that you work with? Um, we can start with the Death by PowerPoint team. Uh, sure, so <clears throat> Dallas mentioned uh, the film that we'd worked on before was actually, it was about the opioid crisis and it was just very intense. And so part of this, the reason to do Death by PowerPoint was just to do something fun, you know? And just because, you know, people like to laugh and need laughter too. And um, I think, you know, at first the whole timing of everything it coming out and then of course COVID hitting was rough. But, you know, now that I think about it a little bit, it's, it's kind of good that it's out now just because it is a comedy piece and it is something people can enjoy and lighten up and laugh too. So for me, it, it did kind of lead. Um, I actually shot another film a couple of weeks ago, a very short one at a golf course. It's also a comedy. So I'm kind of exploring the comedy a little bit now. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I usually, I, 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 for some reason, you know, starting out as an actor, you kind of take whatever you get. And sometimes that can be, uh, you end up falling into a, uh, like, for example, I, I've always done dramatic performances, um, true crime, you know, all kinds of stuff, uh, psychopaths. And, um, <laughs> And you fall into a, a little hole there where you can't get out of it. Um, people always just think you're the innocent killer. So I end up, uh, I wanted to break out of that. Uh, and that kind of started with a film before uh, Death by PowerPoint with a, it was a short film called The Baker Brothers, which is currently going, going through festivals. But uh, yeah, I always uh, had a passion and love for The Office. Um, you know, Steve Carell is a person I look up to, you know, with Jim Carrey following that. And I, I like the, the facial expressions, the goofiness, but then also like that dry humor when it comes to the writing. Um, so that was something that was kind of portrayed in, in this story, Death by PowerPoint, is it's a lot of dry humor um, in a sense of what this person is saying. And so like the character I play is just, uh, he's a... Uh, He's definitely a man. He's a manager that, that micromanages his uh, assistant, and I can relate to uh, a couple people that have micromanaged me in my past. So, coming across with that, I, I took that research, and that was just kind of uh, it was a given for me. So it was definitely fun to work with. Uh, awesome. work, work with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For comedy, I've been uh, especially with this short. Uh, collaborating with Donnie like I have been leaning towards more of like the absurdist kind of comedy thing uh, but specifically structuring working with a story that's very very structured so that you can kind of blow it out and it's, it's almost like therapeutic like you, you figure out like exactly what you're going for and what the the end goal is and so then through that all you know you blow out uh, the absurdity and just have the characters and especially in our short uh, Rick the boyfriend is like what what the hell's going on here as he's trying to figure it out and I feel like that's a lot of what I lent myself especially at this part of my life to starting to attach to is like trying to figure out my own life while uh, you know uh, just making something uh, ridiculous and kind of hiding oh wait there's no there's an actual message within this Donnie. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think a lot of this stuff I do really enjoy is uh, melodrama. And I think bringing melodrama in comedy is, you know, I, I go back and forth on like, well, it just seems easy, right? So you just blow up this scenario and make every character think that this is the most important thing happening. Um, but the more and more I write, even now, I, I never want to even... I think this is my most straightforward comedy I've probably done in the last five or six years. And I think a lot of it is, it's still grounded in like emotion and decision and life stuff. But so the way I can make it palatable for like sort of my sensibilities now is like the melodrama. So it's like, I don't want to like, you know, I, comedy is just uh, what I grew up writing with. So I'm always going to write stuff that's funny, but, uh, going more and more to the dramatic side uh, in my career, the, the sort of bridge to that is melodrama. And uh, I can't get enough of it. And I'm, I'm too, I'm a mid thirties, like myself, a mid thirties martyr, too old to be into melodrama. But uh, 
I'm here for the right reasons not to make friends. Hashtag reality TV. <laughs> Love that. All right. What about, uh, what about you, JP? Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, dark humor. Um, I've got a dry sense of humor myself, my wife also. Um, and I've yet to do anything that's not comedy related. Um, third short film, all of them comedy. Um, I don't, I, I it, you know, comedy is one of those things that it, if you do it the right way, it's great. But if you're trying to be funny and no one gets it, it can be horrific. Um, and I, and I've, I've done that. So I've done that already. Don't need to do that again. Um, but I, I find that, um, especially when you're talking about festivals, um, there's not a lot of people doing comedy, it seems to me. Um, I remember the film I'd done prior to this uh, called Hypothetically, and we'd gotten to the Hollywood Black Film Festival a few years back, and there were probably 150 plus short films there, and only two were comedy. Oh, wow. Only two. Yeah, I was amazed myself. Uh, so, um, of course, you know, there's comedy-centric kind of festivals as well, which is great, and I like to participate there if we can, um, but I feel like... There's enough, I feel like there's enough people doing dramas and the other things. I, I, I think I'll just stick with something lighthearted. I, I know I have more fun when I'm on set when we're shooting comedy because it, it's just a different vibe, you know. Yeah. I've worked on other people, you know. I've worked on other uh, projects for other folks and in the industry. And, and it's, you know, we're doing battle scenes and stuff like that. It's, 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 it's arduous. It can be fun too, but I, when you're shooting comedy, there's just something about the vibe when it's when it's a really good energy. Everybody's, you know, everybody's into it, and everyone's having a good time. It's, so um, I enjoy, I really enjoy that and uh, the collaborating in that way. So that I would say that that's why I think comedy is the thing for me. I, I think I'll keep awesome. doing them. Yeah, uh, Noah. Ah. Uh... My favorite genre of comedy is a uh, funny comedy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Whenever it's funny, I'm, I'm down for it. Otherwise, it's like not, like, yeah. So. Donnie, we should look into that. We should Google that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't really have like a specific, like when it's funny, it works and I love yeah, it. So, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Taking <laughs> <So>. notes. <laughs> And I can't wait. And that's again, like talking about, we talked about virtual every day. And, and, and I think the real, the, the thing I miss in comedy is watching something together in a room full of people and have the energy, the laughter and everything. And that's something that like, you know, um, um, in a film festival to like watch uh, comedy films, that's like that, that, uh, that's, a, that's a big plus. But um, I, I'm also happy that we can all bring um, laughter to people's homes, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, that is that is one of the big bummers for me is, you know, I always I always make sure that I'm uh, free to go to the the comedy shorts blocks whenever they're playing during the festival, because I love to be in there and listen to people laugh and be and, you know, listen like, oh, I laughed at that moment, too. Or, you know, oh, I didn't laugh at that moment. But now I see I see the humor in it. So it's it's uh, that's definitely something I'm going to miss. But but yeah, it's really great time to be bringing the comedy especially in ways that I, I kind of notice a lot of relevancy to this year in a lot of your films um you know death by powerpoint obviously people are working with technology more and maybe there's people that are like micromanaging more um mid-30s martyr you have so many people going back to grad school going back to, and learning different things um you know uh making big life decisions partially because of the pandemic. Um, I know that there was, uh, for free, there was a huge moment, movement towards like decluttering your life and, uh, and everything like that. And then with uh, Sofa So Good, um, so many people spending more time at home and, and try, <laughs> trying to find the perfect sofa to sit on the whole rest of the day. So I think that, that that's something really exciting that, that we get to find the humor in those moments, but then there is so much relevancy. Um, maybe want to go around and talk about a little bit about like the relevancy that, um, that sprung up this year in your films. Um, we want to start by, uh, start with Death by PowerPoint. 
Um, so the relevancy for us, I think, I think, it, and you mentioned it is, you know, everything's going online now. And with, you know, like one thing in job, what I deal with is making classes from face to face to virtual. And of course that's going over all, all the whole country now. A lot of people think that's just flipping a button. Like you turn a light switch on and all of a sudden a class that was face to face is virtual. It does not work that way. <laughs> you know, you, you hear that a lot. People saying, oh, that's very easy to do. And, you know, so with the death by PowerPoint, it kind of gets into this micromanager thinking everything is easy with the whole design. Like, oh, just do this. Oh, just delete the whole thing and now remake it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's hard to do. So it kind of gets into the, you know, sometimes we think stuff's easy technology wise and, you know, all the kids taking Zoom classes or doing all these LMSs and all these things, it's not always easy. So I think we kind of hit on that accidentally. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you, oh, go ahead. You, definitely, you definitely said it, Drew, because um, uh, my roommates were actually just over um, uh, neighbors and their kid, their uh, five-year-old is is on a uh, Zoom class right now. And, you know, it, all you and they were laughing because it was like all you heard was the teacher like, OK, let's get back on topic. And there'll be like a kid in the background going, I hurt my toe. I hurt my toe today. <laughs> And then like, and she's just like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put you on mute. And it's like, that's, that's the sentence of saying, I'm going to put you in detention because where are you going to go? <laughs> so yeah. I, I feel like the relevancy of, of, you know, our film obviously is, you know, being able to work in person versus working virtually. So um, it's definitely weird times, but you know, we'll get through it. Mid thirties martyr. I feel weird. Yeah, I, I keep calling you guys that. <laughs> I, I should no, say it's, <laughs> it's it's accurate. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it works. I'm also uh, a mid thirties martyr. I almost yes. oh, <laughs> we're we're in our prime. We're gonna it's gonna only get better from here. But uh, I I think uh, and I'll speak on this. I think from the relationship aspect of the film, um, you know, right now for everybody being in. Uh, you know, quarantined together for so many months, all couples, relationships. I think it's like, this is a, a, a baked in moment of like state of the union, like, hey, where are we at? And yeah. are, we, are we going to continue to build this thing together and grow as a unit? Or like, I don't know, we have all this free time now and I'm, maybe I'm assessing like, maybe we're not right for each other, different growth trajectories. And even if that's the case, do I want to follow you on your journey? And I think that that is maybe the most relevant of, I mean, just even talking to all my married friends and stuff of just like, it's, you get to check in and maybe if this, uh, you know, this pandemic doesn't happen, uh, you know, it's easy to go through the motions in a loving relationship. So I think that uh, with our film. Yeah, and speaking on the uh, kind of big life decisions, grad school side of the film, uh, we were midway through our uh, film festival uh, circuit when the pandemic hit and the lockdown mm -hmm. happened. And we didn't know what we were going to do uh, with releasing it online or whatever. And, you know, we were like, wait a second, like, this is way more relevant now than it ever has been. You know, for us, clearly, it was like, you know, we need to figure out what the heck we're going to do. So, um, and, you know, people in the service industry, musicians trying to figure out like other career paths and stuff. And it's, it, you know, which is so... Yeah, I just hey, school bus drivers like yeah, just exactly. Name them, um, pick them off off the list. Yeah, and so we we were like, wait a second, let's you know just kind of keep going with this film. So it's it's not just kind of our and the actors and in the Donnie's journey. Let's let's kind of just really keep pushing it now. Absolutely. What about you, JP? Yeah. So. <sighs> You know, I, like I said, the, the idea for the film came to me when we were living in Amman, and it was kind of a, I wanted it to be this statement of strong women, you know, because I've got a daughter, I have a daughter and a son, but I, I felt like I wanted to do something for her to just kind of show this strong female kind of role model. Um, I also really wanted to show a woman of color um, in that role. And when I got to Finland, I met, there's, you know, there's tons of Americans in Finland, so I met a lot of Americans there. But, you know, there's still, I, don't, I, I know for myself, 
when you're around other men especially, there's still some locker room talk. There's still some inappropriate things that people say. And then that's when the, 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 the final piece fit in where I went, oh, I'll make it this. Mm -hmm. I'll have this kind of, you know, misogynistic kind of character versus this strong woman character, this female person. And use like just the silliest of things for him to be saying. That's where the great part of having a comedian came into place. Um, and then just and have this woman play off of that. Um, so relevant to today because I think we are in a place and a space where uh, women are getting more opportunities as they should. Um, and I think that you know since. I, I think in the last two years, I think, there's been a lot of advancements. You see a lot of, of, of really strong women out there. And, and I, I think that's, um, that this came on like kind of the right time for that. Absolutely. You know what? Um, I like the, the connection you did, Hannah, that like uh, the movie is about people staying home and have nothing to do, so they renovate the, their house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a connection. Yeah, that's, yeah. you know, totally. Less, um, maybe less meeting, like, uh, Craigslist strangers, but... Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a way, but in a, in a way, I feel, I feel like it's a bit like the opposite. Like, the movie is kind of like, you see it, and it's a reminder of, like, what, what the city used to be just yeah. Uh, yeah. a few months ago. And uh, I don't know, it's almost like... Uh, I mean, I think we all watch movies now that just happen, and we look at them, and we're like, why are they not wearing yeah. masks? Yeah. <laughs> so... There's something very like New York about the film, and I hope it's like kind of like a moment in time just before the pandemic hit, and those things were possible. And now it's yeah. like a bit different, and um, I like to watch it this way. Like maybe I uh, hope it will get back to it, or maybe it'll be a bit different. But yeah, absolutely. Well, that's so great. Um, I have some more film-specific questions here, um, so we can start with uh, Death by PowerPoint. Um, so I want to talk about the the nonlinear storytelling of it, uh, the decision to make it um, make it sort of like flashbacks, and you know we start with the crime scene, that kind of thing. What uh, what fueled the decision for the nonlinear storytelling of of the film? Um, that's a great question. I I think a lot of it just came from um, just working through it and just. Um, kind of planted, you know, in my head as I was writing it, you know, the flash back and forth and just kind of to give it some pace as well. Because some of the some of the pieces seemed, you know, we didn't want them to go too long where it just stayed with the designer and the, the manager. So we were just trying to keep the pace going really nice. And, you know, and kind of make it a little disjointed, kind of like the whole theme of the PowerPoint anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of, kind of with that as well, so. Absolutely. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely had its, uh, I guess, parallel, um, parallel format with a PowerPoint, because once you go, um, you know, due to the detective asking a question, um, and then she starts to speak, it's almost like it goes back to a new slide of like, what, what is going on here now? And then it goes back, another question goes back. Um, so there's kind of like the storytelling in that in that sense of, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm just, ban I'm just babbling now. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> but yeah, I feel, like, I feel like it has its own, uh, its own format that way. I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. For context to the viewer uh, of this Q and A, we, we haven't seen each other's films. I'm really excited to see all his films uh, for, <laughs> mid 30s martyr uh we also like did a back and forth cutting from the black and white over dramatic uh mm -hmm. her world uh of casablanca to his in color real world thing that donnie you know came uh, with that uh, concept and so but what came out in the editing too is we kind of rearranged it is that it the the black and white to the back and forth of the color became people interrupting each other and just not hearing each other, not hearing their perspectives. And uh, yeah, that's what was really awesome playing around with that. Absolutely. And another question for you guys. Um, I wanted to, to, to ask about Casablanca specifically. Where, where did that come into play? Like why, 
in what point did you have like the epiphany, the aha moment of like, oh, let's compare this to, let's let's do the homage and compare this to Casablanca? Yeah, so this is great. And I don't, you know, my brother and I, I don't think we've talked about this, but I'm a fraud uh, in the sense that uh, I, I just loved it. I don't think I would make a short like this again. I just love the stylized stuff. I've seen scenes of it or whatever, but it's not like, I, uh, it would be much more badass if I was like, I saw that movie when I was 14 and I was like, I'm going to be Rick for the rest of my life. But I think that lended itself to the melodrama and the overdramatic stuff. So going back to my comedy roots of just, you know, a lot of parroting and stylizing stuff. I think that that was, um, and you know, we gave all those character names as an anchor after the fact, but I think really for me, I was just sort of like, and I think at the point when I wrote it, I was not as vulnerable as a writer. So I was like, I can't be like, this character's name is Donnie. <laughs> and this, so it was easy to like give these sort of like preset characters, right? That you already, you know, to the viewer who had seen Casablanca can already fill in the blanks. And, you know, it was like, little uh you know to use an old nintendo reference like a game genie cheat code of like getting you closer to uh what i'm trying to say without uh you know going over the top but i think the melodrama stuff like that's what i loved about it because in casablanca the stakes are so raised and in this the decision to go to grad school or uh, stay together because you have a year lease on an apartment like all that sort of uh fit perfectly in there. Absolutely. Um, and then JP, I wanted to ask about the lamp because I thought that was a hilarious lamp. Did you just have that? Was that something you made? Made it from, made it from scratch, yeah. Okay. Went to, the, <laughs> went to the recycle center. The things are big on recycling. Bought the lamp, bought um, the calendars, bought calendars from a video store. Um, cut them out, glued them on, got some tassels. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. I lo I just love the idea of that lamp just existing in her, in her space. And then I love to imagine the person that saw that and picked it up immediately. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, okay, first, my camera operator, uh, with his screw screen, um, when I showed him the script, he's looking at me and going, where are you going to get this? What, 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 what? I said, ah, oh, I'll, I'll make it, don't worry, don't worry. Oh, okay. Then we're shooting at a friend's house. Her neighbors are walking by and you have this lamp. <laughs> and so people are like, what are all of these people, what is this lamp, what is this? What are you doing out here? And so it was, a, it was a, you know, it was a little, it was funny. But, um, yeah, the lamp uh, was a nice, I thought was a nice little comedy, like, gem yeah. in there to kind of get the point across. Absolutely. Um, and then finally, Noah, um, I, I love the main character and her, like, stubbornness and determination um, to just, that just, like, runs throughout. And then I think it's such a, a, such a cool moment when we kind of find out that it's almost like she's all doing this for her mom, you know, to like show her mom that, that, you know, she's, she's doing okay, which I think is very <laughs> relatable. Um, but I, I, and then, and then we kind of see who her mom is and maybe understand that too. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to know a little bit about like, um, creating that character and especially you know then bringing it to life with with the actor creating that character is living with my is a, as is a, being the daughter of my mom for a third okay. <laughs> um that helps to create yeah. the character of the mom <laughs> absolutely <laughs> even though <laughs> and um the um yeah, and then bring, and and then it was interesting because uh, by the way I'm Israeli and I I I cast it wasn't like intentional just really like Natalie uh, who's Lebanese and um I think uh, uh she I think maybe like in an unaware w way I also like um, chose someone who's like a foreign and and we both come from like 
different countries, like different countries in the Middle East, but like there's a lot of like cultural um, um, similarities in a way. So that was very interesting because they did like make my mom a Lebanese mom, which is very different than, but in a way like very, very similar. So it was an interesting process. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, I would just very, re very relatable all, all around. I loved it all. <laughs> Okay. Um, maybe also, so maybe also uh, in Kansas, there are also moms. Yeah, like that. yeah there are moms like that everywhere. I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> definitely no uh, Middle Eastern anything in my blood, but you know. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you all so much for being here, uh, for giving us your time and for talking to our audience about your films. Uh, my final question for you all. Uh, what is next for your film or what is next for you? Um, anything that you want to plug, anything you want to send people to, talk on Twitters, Instagrams, websites, whatever. Uh, we can start with the Death by PowerPoint crew. Uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to, I guess, wow. I don't know where to begin uh, during this <laughs> time of... Yeah, I know. It's a very crazy. awkward question. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, honestly, right now, I mean, we have, we have Death by PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> Drew, Drew privately messaged and was like, can you go first? And I didn't have time to respond. So <laughs> 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 oh, that was great. Um, no, I, I think right now uh, I have a couple projects I'm producing. Um, one of them is uh, I don't know if you guys heard in the uh, in the news lately, but there's a film or a series pilot that's uh, starting off. Uh, it's the Office spinoff called Uncle Stan, uh, featuring Stanley Hudson, uh, Stanley Hudson's character. So that's something I'm working on. Um, that's uh, here in LA. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thing that's happening right. And for me personally, but as for the film itself, the short film, um, I guess we just were waiting on more notifications for festivals to be a part of, uh, whether that's in person or virtually. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, that goes it for me. Lovely. So Dallas is faster on his feet than I am. He's an actor, so good job, Dallas. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, for this film, like he said, we're just kind of waiting to see what other festivals we'll get into, uh, either virtual or face-to-face. -face. Uh, for me, like I said, I did do um, a very short film the other week, and it was hard because of COVID. Two things with that. One is the just safety and restrictions, and the other is motivation, really. It's like, okay, why do this? You know, so, um, but we did at a golf course. It's called Closest to the Pen, and um, we're in the post-production phase now. So just, Awesome. Yeah, and then maybe doing some screenwriting, kind of get back to that, I think. Absolutely. Well, we'll be sure to be on the lookout for that. Um, Mid-30s Martyr crew. Yeah, for uh, Mid-30s Martyr, as I mentioned, we're, you know, we're kind of reinvigorating our festival run. Uh, so any filmmakers or that have recommend recommendations for film fests or programmers, please let us know. Uh, we really like re fell in love with the, with the short film. We, we, you know, so many of us deal with rejections and we had the, the, the basic like amount of rejections, like whatever, like, uh, and so we were like, should we really push it? And so, we, you know, we, we really are so, so much more behind it now. Um, uh, you, with with the whole you know pandemic and and the state of the world so yeah and at Elias Rod is my uh, Instagram Twitter awesome <laughs> yeah um, I am at Danny Rad Donny Rad I think wait it's D O N N Y R A D uh, on Instagram hit me up I don't have an OnlyFans yet but I will think about it if I hit the elliptical harder. Um, but yeah, I think with the film, we're, we're excited to push it more and um, uh, continue through the fest festival circuit. What, what I'm doing currently is, uh, my brother and I just had a great phone call before I left for work on a TV production right now. I'm in uh, the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, where they don't have good Zoom lighting. Um, <laughs> hence all the <laughs> shadows on me. But um, uh, we talked about a couple of feature stuff and pilots. I have a, a uh, actually, it's funny, Dallas and Drew, I have a, or one of you mentioned an opioid uh, 
piece. I have a opioid dark comedy pilot I'm working on with my buddy Kyle Bertheson. Shout out, he's from Kansas. Oh, went awesome. to Kansas. Not Wichita State, which won me a lot of money in the March Madness circa a couple bunch of years ago. Yeah, yeah, of thank, course. Thank you, Shockers. Uh, I owe you big. Um, <laughs> but so just doing that and uh, yeah, basically waiting to get on the, uh, the horn with my brother and uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do next. But thank you, Hannah and Tallgrass yeah. and the fine folks at Zoom for having us. <laughs> All right. And uh, JP? Uh, so for this film, um, uh, the future is just uh, more rejection from some possible to more acceptance. Uh, uh, you know, this is how it goes. Um, but since we, we got back to the United States in mid-January, uh, just in time for the pandemic, lucky mm -hmm. us. Um, but in that time, I've been working with... Um, uh, one of the filmmakers I met in Finland, he's a Brazilian guy, uh, Leandro Leffa is his name, and he and I have been doing some commercials. We just finished a little marketing video for a local farm here in North Carolina called Haven Farm in Orange County. If you want some delicious non-hormone meat, Haven Farm. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we just finished uh, a couple of little marketing videos for them that I shot with an uh, iPhone 8. I've been really interested in trying to play around with the uh, iPhone because, uh, you know, why not, right? Uh, and then we shot, so I shot that, and then uh, we've also shot two commercials uh, I shot in my apartment uh, with my dog. So we're in post on those, and, and, and hopefully you will see those somewhere on YouTube or some other place. So okay. it's, uh, you know, it's all about making the best with what you got right now. Uh, we've been pretty bunkered down here. We, you know, got back to the States, we're in, in North Carolina now, and, you know, we just been staying around the house, so um, trying to make the best I can, I can at, the, at the time to Absolutely. keep creative and keep doing something, yeah. Absolutely. All right, yeah. and Noah? Uh, so, So Far So Good is now, is currently also in the festival circuit. It has a few festivals now in October, Portland Film Festival, Santa Fe, and others, a couple in Europe next month, and, um, uh, yeah, and I'm looking for more opportunities. The good thing, guys, about uh, the pandemic is that you can just say your film was in a festival. Who's going to... There you go. <laughs> Where? Like, you can just... There you go. <laughs> or, like, blow it up a little. Just say, yeah. Um, and uh, other projects I'm working on, I'm actually, again, I'm producing comedy shows, so I'm just, um, if anyone is ever in New York, and I mean, I hope it will become, uh, I hope we'll get back to it. I... I produce a comedy show called Speak American that is around like immigrant and first generation comedians. And so I'm doing it now these days in like outside uh, and social distancing. And it's been really, really nice. Again, like people awesome. coming together and laughing, even if it's like a bit far apart, it's, it's great. So I'm kind of back, back in comedy, which is great. I'm doing, I did another uh, pandemic short that I'm, um, I shot it via Zoom, which I'm acting in also. So I'm going to, release that soon i hope and uh yeah and my instagram is noah osher and if anyone if, if anyone watched the film and liked it i would love to hear and also my lead actress natalie alcar she's a comedian comedians just don't follow me follow her they just want to be followed so <laughs> they need that now absolutely well thank you all so much for uh lending your time and thank you all out there for watching um we are so thrilled that you watched uh, this Q&A and all of the films in this program. And make sure to keep watching films out there until the end of the festival. Thank you.